Hello, Warlords. Welcome to Saga Thursday. I'm your host, Raj. As always, today I'm joined by Mr. Mr. Monty from Minnesota. How Hello. how are you, sir? Excellent. Excited to jump in, Raj. Yeah. So this is going to be a, a recurring feature, I, I think. So uh, I've discovered the need for uh, kind of an informal chat type show, I think, uh, as far as Saga goes. There's a lot of topics that... I want to dig into um, that maybe don't deserve a full program, but um, I also want to talk about my hobby stuff and the games I've been getting in. So we're going to have a monthly kind of recording session here with Monty. He's the the ultimate gamer. He's always painting stuff. He's always playing, and he's extremely positive about the game. So he's the perfect uh, co-host, I believe for this program and he is graciously accepted and so we're gonna refine this as we go along but basically this is i think is going to be like a podcast essentially type thing for um what many folks are used to but just in a video format here on youtube and uh well let's let's get this kicked off and like i said we're gonna keep it informal uh to start with here but so um, we're in early August here. What have you been up to in July, Monty? So um, July, it was a, a busy month for painting. Um, I broke my foot a while ago, and that means I've had to spend more time painting, if you can imagine that. Lots of sitting uh. and mending. But uh, but the good news is, in, uh, in a fairly short period of time, I've got some uh, Chaos Dwarves playable a playable force ready for the tabletop and i can use them as under earth for age of magic and i can also use them for other world after you showed me how nifty those guys are raj yeah sure so yeah right at the end of, of june there was our tournament and i kind of had a, a wrap-up video about that so this is kind of just picking up where that left off so you were impressed by the dwarves so what what models are, are you using for those well, you know, so there's a so many choices, and I I kind of like um this is one that this happens to me a lot. Um, I back into projects sometimes based on uh, value or like uh, I went on eBay and someone was unloading a whole um, Mantic Dwarf army for like fifty bucks, and then I was like, why? Nice. Yes, I will do that. But but then once I got in, I'm like, wait a minute, what? I got the tiger by the tail because you need a lot more than the 50. The 50 is a good start, but um, but it got me started, and um, they went together nicely. They were the old version of Mantic. Um, they call them Abyssal Dwarves, so more like Chaos Dwarves. Um, but they had metal heads, resin bodies, went together nice, lots of detail on them. And mm -hmm. um, then just to boost them a little bit, I snuck in some really nice Scriber um, demonic shields. Um, so they're, okay. they're they're almost done. I'll get some pictures going, but really happy with them. Like you know, fast turnaround, uh, look pretty good on the table, and can play them as a couple forces. Mm -hmm. Good deal. Yeah, the, the Mantic stuff definitely. As we know in the hobby, you can awfully get a usually get a good deal for secondhand type type stuff. So usually in. Uh, like Warhammer, you know, 50% off is usually uh, where you can find it. But I find for Mantic, it's like 10 cents on the dollar. It's like 90% <laughs> off the, exactly. the retail value. They've been, you know, for years and years giving away box sets for tournaments and stuff like that. So all their prize support is out there to uh, in a pool of people who don't necessarily want it. And, you know, when they're trying to unload it, uh, Monty's here to scoop it up for pennies on the it's dollar. So, exactly. Yeah, those models. They you did a pretty good job with them. Uh, I will say, I think the shields, as you mentioned, really set them off. And I, I think those models originally were just based off their dwarves, and then they could just add like a metal demonic head, kind of to. Oh, he's a chaos dwarf now. Exactly. So, so cool. Yeah, I love the uh, the under earth. I've been looking at those guys also. Another faction with the heavy weapon warrior option. Are, uh, do you have plenty of those guys? I up? do. I'm, I'm going to need to work up some more, and it's going to take a little bit of work because I think out of the set I managed to do like 14. I'd like to get another 14, and i got to figure out like head swaps. And, you know, like mm -hmm. you said, i got to grab like the basic dwarves and get these arms. And But I'm getting there. Yeah. Yeah, heavy weapons are awesome on warriors. Yeah. 
I, I love them. I, I talked about them uh, at length in my, my Turner Report video, and I've still been using them. Uh, for, for me, since, since the tournament, I've been plugging away on my demons, trying to get more stuff rebased. So if folks, uh, I don't know if you know this, but there's a, a community page, I think, on my YouTube page. I think it's called community, but I can essentially post pictures of stuff that I'm working on. So throughout this month, I've been pretty steadily posting a little something every day, so that's been a little extra motivation for me. But I've got another batch of infantry based, but now off uh, camera here, you can't see, I've got all the creatures. I've got so many creatures to, to rebase, probably like a good 20, I would say. And that's just one batch. I have a second batch of 11 more <laughs> creature ogre size guys. And it's been going pretty slow, I have to say. I, I really need uh, some motivation here. I don't know if you're like me, Monty, but I got a ton of stuff done just in time for the tournament. And then after that, even though I've been working on it, it doesn't seem like I've been making much progress. Uh, are, are you a deadline? builder monty or you have the internal yeah, drive yeah. well i mean i i'm a pretty steady painter uh because it's just like it's it's uh well it's painting is my prozac but um on top of that if if i have an event and i'm painting for an event it does put a fire under me it really does seriously i look back at some of the stuff you get excited um you talk to your friends what they're doing and you want to you know you want to come in and and um you know have something kind of nice so um so i'm i'm sorry i'm gonna miss the august event in wasa but uh looking oh, forward yeah. to october and i'll have to have something shiny and new ready to ready to play with you guys mm -hmm. so what uh what's your kind of hobby schedule like um, how many hours per day are you putting in well, so, you know, I'm at that sweet spot in life where my kids are launched out of the house. <laughs> yeah. And as Hagen would call it, the golden age of gaming. Um, so um, so I like to, it's, I'm going to sound pretty spoiled here, I like to get out for a couple games a week. Um, the weeknights doesn't always happen based on work, but, you know, like a Wednesday, Thursday night. And I like to do Sunday Saga down at the club. And then uh, painting... Um, I'm in my painting room with my, you know, all my stuff set up. So if I can just, you know, as soon as work is done, you know, I get home, uh, go, go start painting a little bit. If I get an hour in, that's awesome. Because that hour, the minute I start painting, whatever my workaday problems are, you know, money, work, whatever it is, it's like, that's gone. You know, you're, you're mm -hmm. on to painting and, you know, I just, I just feel better. So, and sometimes I can sneak down after dinner too. But there are actual other things in life that have to be done, <laughs> like the mowing and the yard and the ah. house needs be maintained mm -hmm. okay so you say like a probably like a good hour per day uh, what you're yeah, I'd, I'd say at least i mean there are times when that just doesn't work out but boy i've got a pretty good schedule right now and i just keep moving stuff just keep finding others there's always stuff to work on joe there's always the new adventure and the new you know war band new project mm -hmm. absolutely so i'm um, looking forward in the rest of august here so what do you What's uh what's your target here to to get done? Do you have any idea? Sure. So um I got a I got a nice job done on the uh, Abyssal Dwarves. I do want to buff them out with some kind of demonic kind of theme stuff, which I still need to pick out. Um, I picked up like you know I look over at my unpainted pile and I and I I have <laughs> kind of a strange obsession, kind of a first in first out. And if I have too many projects, it kind of freaks me out. So I actually did a purge. I went through and found some things. I'm like, yeah, I'm not going to do this, and it's just fire sale the stuff. I'm the guy, you know, giving it to you for you know 30 cents on the dollar because <laughs> I because it didn't pan out or my interest changed or maybe you know something happened. But then once I prune it down, then I find new things. So coming in the mail to me in the next week should be some victory. Tricks, um, plastic Vikings, and I want to use those to make um, a, a Norse Gale warband with a little bit of green stuff to kind of, you know, make them look a little bit, you know, Viking Irish. Mm -hmm. And so there's no rush on that one, but boy, when they come in and I see them, I've seen them online, they look beautiful. So I really, I want to take my time and kind of think that one out. So that's coming. Awesome. The Norse Gales, very fun faction. So, uh, for for me, I guess my goal is going to be to get the rest of these demons based. At the end of the month here, I'm going to be going to Denmark and Sweden, actually. Wow. So 
Uh, we'll be meeting up with some of the the local saga folks out there. It's been it's been arranged, and uh, hopefully get to some sweet biking museums and uh, <laughs> soak in the historical sites and the interesting food. So that's going to be kind of like a na- I'm I'm using that as not a, as a deadline. I, I guess it's not uh, anything hard, but that's that's my goal. Hopefully, I can light a fire under my butt because uh, probably since mid May is when I've been rebasing these guys so i mean there there are like over a hundred plus of these dudes but um that just seems like it's taking way too long <laughs> to get through these so uh that's going to be my goal so uh hopefully next time we we chat up here we can talk about our successes that's it we'll the, hold you to it on the, on the tabletop so uh hopefully that'll work out yeah. Um, awesome. So, have you been playing games with the Abyssal Dwarves there as the Under Earth? Um, I have. I've have. I've given a, a little bit of a run out, and the Under Earth I'm kind of messing around with. So, I, I should explain. Um, in Saga: Age of Vikings, uh, one of my core and favorite factions is the Anglo Saxons with like a very levy heavy build. Mm-hmm. And I realized when I looked at the Under Earth, they emphasize numbers, they emphasize big units, and they also they might be the only faction that can take levy. You know, basic shield levy so they're you know four fours and oh, they're really? throwing six dice yeah yeah okay so as crazy as this sounds um i've had some pretty good success running like three units of levy and they're there like every levy to muddy things up and you know mm-hmm. they they can throw six dice and my my uh, sorcerer can boost that to eight and a couple other plays and once the battlefield gets muddy i've got like 12 a unit of 12 warrior um firearms tucked in there and then i have also the alchemist so i'm popping fatigues and shots fatigues and shots and so as you get all muddied up with the levy then the other guys start creeping around and then the creatures sweep in and it's actually been surprisingly effective Mm -hmm. um until i played stents this week and then it kind of fell apart in in a particular you found a way around it i got (laughs) stents so what was he playing in age of magic yeah, he's loving the horde, and he's using his orcs and goblins. They look awesome. I mean, this is the this is a really nice thing. Like last weekend, um, of of the six people who came out, like uh, three of them were bringing stuff that I hadn't seen before. They're they're like actively painting, bringing out new pieces, um, you know, building new builds, and just kind of like kind of like putting your feet in and figuring out like what works in this crazy world of Age of Magic, what doesn't. And so that's what Stence was doing too. He had mm-hmm. some ideas. Um, for the challenge scenario, and he came ready for it, and I was kind of messing around, and it, it fell apart. But it was still fun. It was always fun. Good deal. Have you tried out the wep- the little weapon team guys for for Under Earth? Oh, man, so I struggle with that one, and I maybe I need to maybe I need some advice for someone who's using it. Um, because here's here's what they are, right? I mean, the idea is like with my build is to kind of muddy you up fatigue you up and then like in the second half you know really launch my hard hits Mm -hmm. and and take those units out so if i if i um if i do the weapons teams they're one figure there are three three so you really have to be careful where you have them right you got to kind of you got to kind of lurk and hide them back because i'm telling you you know units like you with your flyers and and um, eruption you know they pop across the field grab that three three and smash it and then fatigue goes everywhere so i've been i've been kind of leery about using them and then each one will require a um you know a, a common die as a warrior to activate and when they shoot i'm going to shoot like three dice and so like i look at like the efficiency of the board and the board is so hungry like you know trying to get all your units going i can i can do that but I've been leaning towards letting my um, alchemist and letting a unit of uh, warriors, which is vulnerable itself, right? You got to be careful mm-hmm. and shepherd them. Um, but um, using that one where I can shoot out six six shots with my firearms and uh, be much more efficient. So okay. yeah, I haven't one. figured out the I haven't figured out the that one angle yet. Mm-hmm. Is the alchemist does he inflict fatigue with with he, his bombs as well, or is he just so, more of a damage so dealer? So does if it's inside six. And so, and that's that's kind of interesting. And the inside six thing, I did clarify in the forum, like for the firearms, is only like if one figure from a team is inside six, and that can, that's you shoot as inside six. You um, with the firearms, you get like you know um, 
a plus one to your shots or a minus one to their armor, and then you click the fatigue on them if it's under six. And the alchemist isn't using firearms, but if it's six inches or under, he does um, he does kick quick out of fatigue if he hits you. Mm-hmm. And I think he also there's a rule. Well, I really should crack it open here. Um, that if your armor is yeah, it's capped. More, it's capped. Yeah, yeah. Some- takes it down exactly five yeah. something like that so yeah i think he's one of the the really uh useful lieutenants as far as the the different options go because he can he, he can activate with his own determination and he's he's doing something at least yep. uh yep. where some of some of the other lieutenants are a little suspect and i've kind of given up on the other world lt the conjurer just never really worked out for me there um uh, but yeah, since our game, I've swapped out him and f- dropped the four warriors that were with him. So it was like a point essentially, and okay. popped a monster okay. in there. So that's oh, kind of yes. uh, if I had a default type of build, you know, for all comers, you know, this is the best thing that I think I could take right now. You know, just based off what I think I can play well, that's probably it, and it works well because uh, one problem I had in that tournament was warriors and creatures all activate on the commons and so okay. some turns you just roll so many uncommons <laughs> that right. uh, you, you're drowning in them and you can't activate your guys to actually benefit yep. from that so having the opposite in the form of a, a monster there who can activate with the uncommons i think i think it's been valuable in my game since and then it brings back to the to hearth guards you know having those guys being able to activate on anything I think is something that people maybe don't think about when they're building their stuff. Um, you know, I've been playing a lot of Saga every every Friday, so wow, um, nice. I swapped out for that monster, and then uh, actually I added two more. You can take up to three in the other world. <laughs> so I played a game, uh, two games, running three behemoths with my oh other my world gosh uh so three behemoths the sorcerer and then four points of warriors split into my favorite little mix which is uh, two units of 11 with heavy weapons and then a unit of 10 flyers and i think that's a great four points so uh my games i played a game against sam who is running horde and we've been using the uh i don't know what the proper term is but the the card, the scenario generator cards from the Book of Battles yep. for all of our Those games. Those are awesome. Yep. So it's not like you guys are playing the challenge. Have you guys been uh, doing those one-off scenarios or, or using the cards or just we've, going back We've been to, doing a mix. Yeah, yeah, we've been doing a mix. Like when it comes to showtime, like we're getting close to an event, we'll practice the events, right? So we don't walk in blind. But when we're not preparing for an event, um, you know, we've done the cards. I love it. The only thing is um, we finally set up like a little stand to put the cards up because we'd be three quarters of the way through and there's like, you know, six cards. We're like, wait, what? What what, 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 what am I doing here? And you got to keep track of that. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, you have deployment and then the terrain stuff. So once that's done, you can just toss those cards. You just have game length, a special rule, and then the victory condition. So the victory condition one there um, is quite important. But I've, I've really been enjoying them, and it's kind of cool. Each one has their own way to kind of differentiate between going first and second and like the essentially the going first penalty. Um, I don't know how else you would phrase it, but yep. uh, starting with only three dice, and but each one is kind of slightly different. So um, in the game against Sam, I still haven't gotten a good battle against the horde, I feel, of the full uh, in-your-face might and speed of them because my horde games have been against uh, newbies for the most part, you know, their first game of Saga Age of Magic. Here we go. Sam has played a lot of games with them but our deployment was i don't know if it's pincer attack but it's basically four corners so we could start out within within six inches of each other and i had behemoths (laughs) sitting right across from his chariots and his creatures and it ended up being just a a slog fest uh i didn't even hardly use any saga abilities because with the the monsters you don't they can't use them you don't have to but i was just you know he hit me 
and eliminated a unit. I'm like, well, I have to hit him this turn, and I have to do it, take him out. And then on his turn, he would hit me back. Yep. And so it was just tit for tat, back and forth. And then at the end, most of his units were eliminated. He was running uh, the chariot. He really loves the chariots. Um, he was he runs the lieutenant guy, and then uh, a couple big units of creatures, a big unit of hearth guard, and then a, a couple of warriors hanging out back there. So he has a really hitty uh, force, but doesn't have necessarily a lot of resilience. Um, so at the end of it, all my units, you know, it's down to two or three warriors in each unit, and then two of the monsters were still kicking, but they're three or four fatigued up. Uh, my warlord was still kicking, so I got the victory there. But there you go. It was just a quick. Pretty quick game. Yeah, it was just back and forth. Um, just <laughs> insane type of game. And then I did get one other game in that I'm going to talk about, um, which was against Jeremy. And basically, it was just a rehash of our game from the, the tournament. So Jeremy was running Undead. And uh-huh. um, he, he's he been running the Necromancer, the Eight Hearth Guard, and then the Rest Warriors and Mindless. And he... Um, once again, well, he started taking eruptions as well. He saw the the power mm-hmm. of it. So yes. first turn, he actually uh, did a super spell on his hearth guard and was able to fly him over into a unit of my warriors. So he has eight hearth guard versus 11 my warriors. Um, I did have some stuff on my board, and I blocked a bunch on fours, so I ended up living. But uh, the the buff spells for the undead are quite good with the hearth guard. Yes. So he's yep. using the the heavy weapons. So we're hitting each other on twos. Oh. Uh, my guy's on twos, and um, he can take his armor up to five. If he does a wound, he can uh, remove a fatigue. So he's able to fly out over his troops, engage my warriors. Unfortunately, it didn't really work out for him. I killed four hearth guard and he killed maybe four warriors um just that i blocked so many on fours and then he was able to fly back and the way the fatigue worked out with his abilities and everything i couldn't even you couldn't stop it you couldn't (laughs) slow it down but um he left his necromancer uh, about 12 inches or so away from my warrior unit and so i did my uh (laughs) Now, yep. go-to strategy, you know, what's the weakest point? The wizard. Yep. And so I went in and hammered his, his necromancer. And um, I don't know if I – I think I did kill him. I, I don't remember. It might have been a, a turn or two to finally get at him. But I finally took out the necromancer, teleported some guys behind, got to the hearth guard again. And so that's like the obvious stuff. Like if he, if he took an entire line of warriors, that would be a really tough army – to, to go again because like there's no target really I, I was I was gonna I was gonna say um, I was gonna say on this Raj I um, I don't think it's shocking to say this and I'm not like I mean this isn't a wine but the more I see of the undead the more I would rate them as the first candidate to get FAQ'd next year because there is some wicked wicked stuff the board is amazing without the ability to regenerate your dead and take away your massacre points, that's that's kind of like piling on. And I've seen, like, um, you know, a buddy of mine, like you're saying, right, once you figure out you can overactivate a unit, you can strip the fatigue on a common die, right, mm-hmm. and, and take the figures away, then you can use, uh, I think it's reanimation to bring them back. I mean, it, it's, you know, units that are exhausted are just, they're just pausing. I mean, they just, like, they come right back to life. And then the worst thing is, I, I knew when I played them, I'm like, okay, the rule is destroy the non-warrior units first. Cap is Saga mm-hmm. Dice, right? So he started at eight. I got I killed his Hearthgar units, got him down to six. And But, of course, he's not sitting there, like, doing nothing. He's flying his archers around, so they go out on a <laughs> flank, and they start shooting up my creatures. My creatures are second line, right? Mm-hmm. But, you know, eruption, boom, oh, look where they are now. And then, you know, they can hyper-shoot. You can just you know, do shoot, 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 um, you know, shed the fatigue, um, bring the units back. Ooh, look, we're better. So, I mean, there is there's some amazing synergies in there, and I am not sure. You know, once you once you're fully trained up, and operational when a good player is running the undead uh i think they're going to be like a tank but 
I don't know. Maybe I just haven't figured everything out. I just think personally, and my, my buddy has agreed with this, that when we play, just, you know, mm -hmm. house rule. And I never house rule anything. I always play the rules as they're written. But for the undead, we're like, yeah, okay. House rule. We are going to count your master points. Yeah, you can bring it back. You have all the other amazing abilities, but we're going to count those points. Because, I mean, come on, man. Come on. <laughs> wow, that's awesome. Uh, that's funny because, yeah, Jeremy's not really enthused about the undead at all. And oh, so, wow. But he hasn't been taking the any bow warriors, okay. which, which I think okay. I would definitely take some bow warriors if I was running them. Um so does the the fellow you play against does he just use a regular warlord or does he does he tr take the necromancer yeah. yeah so he did the necromancer but i did hunt it down and he thought it was kind of a liability so what yeah. what he decided was what you've hit on which is dump you know dump your hearth guard go warrior heavy so everything can cycle back and then have a nice amount of archers i mean i mean you can make a case to say put 12 archers out there and you're like oh 12 mm. archers they're vulnerable well they are except they have that ability oh i gotta find the board where like for a common again they're already dead and like you know they have resilience four and i dish eight hits on him and he just smiles and puts like two fatigues down and says okay what are you doing next mm -hmm. it's like what just it's brutal it's brutal when it gets cooking so so i can okay. understand right i mean i've had boards where i gotta like play it and play it and play it to wrap my head around it but boy i just look out because when he does wrap his head around it uh it, it can be kind of painful mm -hmm. <laughs> all right i'm looking i'm looking forward to it so, oh, okay um yeah so those are two games that i play i did play two more games uh against dave uh, Beneric. So he came up to Wasa the other day. I took photos of those and I will be making nice. battle reports of those games. So I'm not going to rehash those here. Um, but one thing I will say is we, again, we use the cards to come up with the scenarios. And so uh, we, we played the same army in both games, the same troops. I think maybe you had a different spell in the second one, but um, you're just going to see how different the games of Saga can be if you use these cards because these were the most completely different games that, that we could play um, back to back just using the, these cards here. So um, I highly recommend going to the Studio Tomahawk page and uh, printing yourself out a uh, set because I think it's well worth it to uh, keeping your, your Saga games interesting uh, for yep. sure. So uh, with that, you... So you mentioned the fact. So I mentioned the fact uh, in a video earlier, but I never really got into it. And uh, this is a reason for for doing this kind of format here. Is this kind of have informal discussion about it? So you brought yeah. up an interesting point with the undead there, and you thought that they were going to be fact in the in the future. So there was a Age of Magic, just a, a page or two, with Correct. some various clarifications, and they're really. No, no surprises really or really big changes nope. at all as far as this stuff goes for for age of magic but you brought up some things when it happened which i guess we're gonna have to deal with uh, saga's kind of like a living living game now where <laughs> right the the first run around for the most part corrected some things that maybe were broken um you know, the rules wise, they mechanically worked and there's no issues, but, you know, they kind of um, done some changes with the abilities, bring some stuff like the Welsh in lie, you know, and stuff like that. But I guess one thing we weren't expecting for the second go around here was further uh, tinkering <laughs> right. with the uh, abilities and yes. some, some buffing of some abilities and some uh, changes to, to other abilities. So I guess what's your. What, what are your thoughts about that? Um, so so I, I thought like in the Age of Vikings, that one was a little light touch, right? Mm -hmm. Which is good because they already hit it last year. Um, and, and just small plus minus here, right, Raj? Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's good 
um, especially something like this that's used a lot here and, in, and internationally, like as kind of an event thing, and you can come out and you know play three games in a day or maybe six in two days or whatever. That they they try to keep everything kind of within you know interesting and and you know within challenging distance of each other. So that's good. Um, so the Age of Vikings, they well, they did uh, the priest, I think, lost a die, yeah, and the personal champion picked one generate. up. Right, and and I'm not a I'm not someone who runs the priest, but you know I was listening to an event um, in the UK that was uh, Age of Crusades, and the the good players were making like the Spanish board work with the priest, but when you take away you know his ability to generate a die, that might be enough to kind of nix him. I mean I don't know, not as a not as a priest player, I'm not sure, but it certainly does hurt. Um, and the champion picked up a die, a saga die, so that's a plus. And then both of them, they clarified they get um, something called the loyal rule, which means that when they're eliminated, um, you, you know, your opponent doesn't get the plus two for d destroying a mercenary unit because they count as, like, you know, part of your war band. And I think oh, there cool. was something nice in there for you, too, right? The last Roman battle board got a little bit of juice. Yeah, I will say. So uh, one of the abilities, the shooting ability that lets you shoot over stuff has another little side of benefit now of adding three three attack dice for essentially the same value so uh, that was one of the most useful uh, abilities I, I thought on the board i actually used it all the time so i don't think that i needed anything else to become more useful but i will definitely take it um <laughs> if you right. listen to the analysis of from me and hamza we were I won't say we were cynical about uh, everything or, or grumpy about how, how the board turned out. but um, So the other ability was Contos, which improved a bit, but it still, I still probably won't use it. So it's two, I think, two common dice. You roll a D6 for every hearth guard you have. And then on a, it used to be a four plus, and now it's a three plus, you discard an opponent's attack or defense dice. So the key thing there is if they don't have a defense dice, so most of the time they won't, it doesn't mm -hmm. actually make them any hittier. And so, you, yep. I mean, you are removing someone's attack dice, which is a little unusual. There aren't a lot of abilities like that. But if it, even if this like worked automatically, like I probably still wouldn't be using it that much. <laughs> so just taking it down to a three um, probably isn't going to... Uh, sway me towards it but um, it, it was a surprise I guess I, I was blown away that um, we're seeing further revisions here and I think the Moors got yep. three, yes, three uh, revisions of their battle board abilities so um, I, I guess my opinion I think it's cool I, I do like games that circle back around and revisit stuff and try to keep things balanced unfortunately I in my band, the way that Saga is set up and Studio Tomahawk is set up where they make their money on the books and stuff, it's just unfortunate because if if we're using PDFs and the rules were free and everybody could reference those and whenever somebody went to the site, they always had the most current battle board um, and the most current rules, that would be super slick. Um, I guess my concern is, you know, there's a lot of stuff here if you're just picking up the game now you know i can play a game against somebody i don't think this would happen in, in saga because we're all nice folks but you'd be like oh yeah uh there's a, a fact now i get plus three uh shooting dice whenever i use this ability <laughs> and you're like what right um so i'm kind of i'm kind of mixed on it um uh, overall i i think i am in favor of it most of the people that i play are in tuned you know, I think most folks are aware of the internet and uh, are, are eager for facts and clarifications and that kind of thing. So overall, I do feel it's positive. Um, any uh, favorite changes here or uh, boosts or buffs? I, I have one, but I will let you speak. I want to um, the same one. Well, yeah, yeah. So I just, if I could just for a second, oh, I, yeah. I just want to second everything you just said there. And I was kind of starting to go there and I pulled back, but thank you for running that out because I mean, it, it is good, the balancing and keeping it up and, you know, up to date and kind of figuring out like, you know, we got all these people playing these rules and someone is going to always find if they stack this with this, with this, you know, some things can become monstrously good. Um, but 
Um, but the the one the one hazard, as you're saying, is that like you know, I mean, you know, if you're have a little bit of OCD or you like the aesthetics, and now you know five of my boards are stickered up, and I can't get new boards, I can't use a PDF. Yeah. Um, I got to go through my book, and I I like run prints of the FAQ, then I put a little glue in the back, and I stick them in the book, and I don't know. I mean, and like you said, but the, beyond that, really, beyond the aesthetics, is really just. I don't. I want to keep the entry point low. I don't want a lot of static for the new people. And like you said, I'm a little. You know, I tell my guy, hey, uh, all you have to do is buy this book, buy this, paint this army. Oh, and then now go here, cut this out, stick it in the book, and you know, hopefully we haven't we haven't slowed them down or discouraged them. I don't think we have, but but that's the one thing when it's a paper product versus a PDF or something we can all print out. And we're all looking at exactly the same thing. But okay, en- enough on that. Um, mm-hmm. I did like that they uh, gave a little fix in the um, um, uh, Age of Crusades for the Spanish uh, genites. They kind of brought yeah. them back. What that was, was that the, was the change yep. there. So, um, so they got inadvertently broken um, when they did the uh, javelin fix, and the javelin fix was needed in version uh, two when it first came out. Right, mm-hmm. um, the way the board was written was, you know, you get all these free moves, and when it was originally written, you know, your genites uh, mounted unit run around. Each time it moves, it shoots to exhaustion, so it's a chance to kind of go muddy up the battlefield. But then once they did the javelin nerf, take it down a notch, you only get one free shot. But now um, it's been clarified to say they get a free move and shoots. So you can move up once, get your free shoot. And then if you sit yourself in a nice spot, like kind of with multiple units around, you could stay in that spot and say, okay, now I'm going to shoot at this one. I'm going to shoot this one. I'm going to shoot this one. So it gives them some muscle back to an ability that had been accidentally nerfed. So that was nice. Mm -hmm. Cool. How about you? What was what was your favorite? Uh, the favorite thing I saw was the changes to the the bard, and I guess Ooh, yes, in, yes, uh, crusades. He has a, a quote a troubadour. I'm, I'm, I'm not yep. sure what he's called, but um, essentially, he sort of turns your warlord into in Age of Magic <laughs> like a warlord on a beast. Yes. Um, yes he does. Essentially, so I've been loving my warlord on a beast for my other world. So. The idea that I can bring that back into the the historical realm is quite tempting. So he loses, uh, I'm not sure what meager buffs he actually had um, going for him, Um, but he gains now your warlord. As long as he's within line of sight of that little Mm -hmm. bastard, he Mm -hmm. can charge for free. Uh, He gets plus two attacks and he's resilience too. Yes. So um, he's not imposing like the the uh, warlords in Age of Magic, so you can't get to that fourth fatigue, uh, unfortunately. So you always got to remember you're stuck at three. But uh, we know how powerful Resilience 2 is uh, as compared to Resilience 1. So I painted up a, a bard some, sometime last year. And so he's never uh, seen the light of that. At some point, I was thinking, I'll just use him in a battle report just to... Say, ooh, how did the bard turn out? But now I'm like, oh yeah, the bard, especially uh, uh, compared for the uh, Anglo Danes. Uh, I think you could have a very nasty fellow uh, if you're right. using the legendary, uh, the Harold Godwinson. Uh, you would be making some people cry. I, I think. If, uh, if, uh, that sounds brilliant. So I want to hear all about it. Yeah, we'll we'll keep that in mind as we. Uh, uh, design the Adepticon rules pack. I'll just let Hag- I'll let Hagen know about that one. There, you might want to consider right. what he's up to uh, as far as mercs and uh, legendary characters. But uh, yeah, that would have to be my favorite change because I think looking at it, you're like, there's no no way that I'm going to take that guy. And I like the idea that he was free and he just changed the war band for you. I think. If we could have like more stuff like that, I think that would be really interesting. Yeah. Um, just yeah, it's awesome free. change. Yeah. So I'm pumped about that, and uh, looking forward to to running it. I do run my my last Romans warlord. I I always use my warlord pretty pretty darn aggressively, so I think that is something I'm I'm gonna give it a shot. So. Uh, yeah. 
I've, I've noticed, um, I mean, it's a mix, right? Everyone, whatever style works for you, but some of the better players, um, and Stence is a perfect example, uses his super aggressively. And, and when he does it, sometimes I'm like, what? And then it always works out. I'm like, what? Seriously, dude? It's those magic yeah. dice. Yeah, it has to be. I mean, in uh, the, the Age of Magic, the, the Beast Warlord and the Otherworld abilities, it usually lives, but... In the historical time, my warlord he he dies a lot, so I don't know. <laughs> I, I will admit he does that. his job. I, I throw him right out there. To, there you go, and uh, get the action in. Um, some other interesting changes, I guess, that affect me would be the the Flemish and the Western knights. Yep, and uh, their equivalents in Age of Crusades Vikings. I'm not sure which one I'm referencing here, but are limited to one activation. So those are both units I was looking at for my last Romans and then Mm -hmm. uh, the Byzantines as well. So, um, yeah, those guys are interesting. I think for the last Romans, I I think there still could be a case for using the, uh, the, the Flemish at least because you can redirect an opponent's charge into them. So, uh, potentially, you know, they, they can still see some action, but otherwise, just a short, it, it's not it's not long, Monty. Short doesn't yeah, get no, you very far. No, exactly. And I mean, when I, you know, when I run the monster that's moving short, I constantly have a problem of the battle moves on without him and he gets left behind. You mm-hmm. really have to focus. That's why I think they did that is because they're both very popular options. Um, they give they give war bands like a kind of tank like unit. And they're so tough that you're willing to, like in the early game, double move them, take the fatigue, just to get them to the spot where you need them to. Now, now you, you're going to just have to, I mean, I don't know, you either have to slow down or, or uh, just accept they're going to be lagging. Mm-hmm. But they still have a role. I mean, they're still they're still amazing, and they're still great in scenarios that you know you need to guard an objective or block a bridge or you know something yeah. along those. Yeah. So I, I was going to say, I think they're going to be scenario picks uh, versus just all purpose or whoever i'm playing uh having some flemish and my welsh are gonna gonna be good (laughs) Uh, (laughs) right so uh cool well yeah i didn't really want to dig too much into the facts stuff you know it's just more kind of discussion stuff i know northern tempest has a good review of the fact as well so if you haven't listened to that um he recently came out with a podcast that i found super informative um and he they just had a crusades tournament so it was interesting to Mm -hmm. contrast what happened in that tournament and then what came out afterwards and maybe it wouldn't have been the same tournament if some of those fact clarifications had been in play but uh okay cool well any closing thoughts here monty about about the fact uh closing thoughts on the fact well i mean i've i've got them down um i've read them i don't think i mean a few people like them some of the moorish players are a little bit grumpy but i i mean i look at it as a moorish player and i think it's like the welsh they they got down a peg but they're still really good they're still really good and honestly i probably relied on discord too much so if i never use it again that just makes me change (laughs) my playing style a little bit and that's probably for the better so there Mm -hmm. we go yeah we can always look forward to to the fact 2020 perhaps mixing <laughs> things up again right we'll see and, and see if anything happens to the undead we'll, we'll just mark yeah, that down we'll, we'll, we shall see so cool well i think this went well we had a lot of interesting discussion points it's cool to hear about what you're working on how your games are going so yeah, you guys are pretty strong on Age of Magic. Is that kind of the the default for you guys right now, or? Yeah, it's it's a little tricky, right? I'm gonna do Age of Viking this next Sunday. We've got a new player who wants to put their foot in. They've got a Viking warband, but um, coming out of the release, right? Like, there's a lot of energy. Um, we've got some players. Um, I'm not one of them, but I mean, we got some players who play fantasy, and they already have the fantasy models. And in some case, they're sitting on a shelf, right? And they're beautiful figures. So it's great when you can find something that's kind of resting in the back of your closet, put it out on the table. So, so yeah, there's a lot of energy for that. Um, but at the same time, right, um, we've got our Saga Storm coming up in September. That's right. And that's probably going to fire up the storming for Age of Vikings again. Get that back up on the front of the plate. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. That sounds great. Yeah, I think as we come along here, we've been playing a lot of Age of Magic, and um, you know, a lot of that is trying to get new folks in 
down at the mm-hmm. shop they see us playing magic kind of like what you were saying trying to get that old fantasy crowd but yeah you know, a lot of folks um you know i show up or playing age of vikings and stuff so i think that original kind of calling is still out there for a lot of folks and uh, it'll be interesting to see as we keep going here into the different ages how how that develops further you know yeah. um, some group's gonna glub to uh, these specific ages and not want to go any further in, in their saga journeys i guess we shall see but uh okay cool well um once again i'm going to get my demons based so that's my goal here i'm throwing it out there um i'm gonna have photographic evidence hopefully so do check out that community page and monty you're always posting your goodies on the, the facebook uh, saga groups so i think that would be a good spot for folks for now in the future i do want to come up with a, a site or something for us where we can throw all the pictures of the stuff that we talk about for for folks to just go to one place and see it all um you do are you still actively updating the the twin city gamer blog monty or um is so that a good place pro- to send folks for your stuff yeah. or um, well, gee, Raj, this one's a little tricky. Okay. Um, I've slowed down. I, I'm probably every five or six weeks. Um, and recently I went in there. Google, you know, Google did this thing with their Google Plus. They mm-hmm. tubed it and then they killed some other things. And then something in the background happened that totally foobarred um, my post from like 2016 and back. And it kind of took the wind out of my sails. It's like oh, going no. back and her seeing, yeah, the so, pictures were all not associated with the uh, posts anymore, which kind of ruins it. So oh I'm kind of like, wow. it's hard to like go back in, like after all that work and then just look at it and go, oh my God. So I don't know. Um, yeah, I like the idea of a community share and Facebook is a good place. And so, so this is a good lesson, just like it works for the undead. All is dust, including <laughs> your blog eventually. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry to hear that, but... Uh, Facebook does seem to be where it's at. And like I said, hopefully we can get a little something, a folder or a blog style, something or other with with our photos here of our collaboration going forward. And I would like this to uh, be more of a community discussion, maybe more so than some of the other videos. So folks have had an opportunity to to play the facts. So we're curious about your thoughts and what what your favorite change perhaps is. If you want to post in the video below, we'll be checking out the comments and uh, hopefully we can get some good discussion going. And then if anybody has any hobby goals about Saga uh, and want to play along with our, our monthly challenge, perhaps they can go ahead and post below. But otherwise, I want to thank Monty for agreeing to do this. We're going to see you in four four or five weeks my trip is now that i think about it uh probably around that time frame so maybe we'll record a little early or a little later i prefer a little early let's let's stay ahead of this stay ahead of this thing man money can do raj (laughs) okay god that's going to be an awesome trip by the way you need to make sure you share those photos with us oh uh, cool yeah absolutely uh well, it remains to be seen if uh could get a game of saga in i don't know i'll be there with the <laughs> wife so i don't know what she's gonna be doing while while i'm getting my saga on but right um yeah i'm gonna be meeting uh danish freddy from the danish spotlight and then nice. swedish freddy and hamza have offered to to put oh. me up so excellent um, yeah, I recently talked with Freddie about the Crusaders, Hamza about The Last Roman. So they've been on multiple videos. So uh, you know, I was able to show my wife, you know, here they are. Uh, no no creepsters. That I'm, <laughs> gonna be, that's always a, a concern, you know, with people from the Internet. I'm like, yeah, I think I think one of them's getting married. I think the other one may be married. They, they live with their girlfriends or wives. And she's like, okay. That's cool. <laughs> so, yeah, hopefully I can uh, report on that. But um, let's shoot for uh, before and then yes. afterwards. The timing of such will probably be that we can chat a little bit about Saga Storm. So we've got that to look forward to. So, Oh, yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you, Monty. Thanks, everybody. And uh, good, good Saga times. We'll do it again. Check you later. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thanks, Raj. Saga!